Could hyperbaric oxygen therapy support somebody with an autoimmune diagnosis? And if so, what would some of those protocols look like? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. Unfortunately, we're seeing autoimmune diagnoses skyrocket year after year for the last few decades, and especially in the last two to three years. Many people are looking for either alternative or additional support in helping to heal from whatever autoimmune disease they've been diagnosed with. So autoimmunity is a very large topic to cover. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover what is autoimmunity on a very broad and surface level. Then we're gonna talk about, based on that information, where would hyperbaric actually potentially help somebody with an autoimmune diagnosis? Then we could begin a conversation around how autoimmunity is affecting different tissue types and that these protocols may look different based on the tissue type that's being affected by this disease. And lastly, we'll cover just some additional guidelines for what initial protocols look like versus potential ongoing protocols if we're having success with a patient. In the absolute most basic and surface level conversation, autoimmunity would be defined as a patient's immune system identifying some cell type or some tissue type as foreign and then attacking that tissue type. This leads to a variety of consequences, including elevated levels of inflammation, cell damage and tissue damage in that area. And then depending on what cell type or tissue type this is, a whole host of additional symptoms as a result of that tissue damage. Technically, autoimmune diseases are diseases of the immune system itself. However, in traditional medicine, you don't see an immunologist. You end up going to the doctor of the tissue type being affected. In other words, if the autoimmune disease is of your thyroid, someone would end up at the endocrinologist. If the autoimmune disease is of their nervous system, you end up at the neurologist. If the autoimmune disease is of the GI system, you end up at a gastroenterologist's office. So we don't treat autoimmunity at the root cause in traditional medicine. We end up just treating the consequences and the effects of the autoimmune disease inside whatever that tissue type happens to be. In the overwhelming majority of cases, this is viewed as an overreaction of the immune system. And so immune suppression is the standard treatment for autoimmune diseases. Patients typically end up on either steroid medications or eventually on these newer biological medications that are all geared towards suppressing the immune response. In many cases, patients experience some relief of the symptoms with these initial medications, but ultimately either the dosages need to go up over time because the disease is continuing to progress, or especially in terms of these biological medications, the body becomes resistant and it no longer works. And so we switch from one biologic to the next. And of course, as you probably already know, there are additional consequences of being on some of these medications long-term. Immune system disorders, cancers, are all potential consequences of long-term use of immune suppressant medication. So whether a patient is trying to avoid taking some of these immune suppressing drugs, or they're taking these drugs, but they're still not getting the effect that they were hoping for, or in many cases, they've already become resistant to a series of these additional medications, and there's really not many options left, people are looking for additional and adjunctive therapies that could help them better manage and reduce the symptoms of these chronic illnesses. While autoimmune diseases are not technically on-label diseases that are treated with hyperbaric medicine, we do utilize hyperbaric oxygen off-label to help patients and support them through this autoimmune journey. When we're dealing with off-label indications in hyperbaric, we really have to look at the mechanisms of action of the therapy that we're utilizing. How does this device work and what will it do to somebody? And then the pathophysiology of this person's condition, does it make sense to apply this therapy with these mechanisms for this condition with this physiology? And so if we did that and we assessed autoimmunity as a whole, what would we find? We would find that there are certain cytokines or inflammatory markers that are consistently and chronically elevated in the overwhelming majority of these patients. And one of the mechanisms of action of hyperbaric is to reduce inflammation. We would also see that there's cell damage and tissue damage in a lot of these cases. As a result of the chronic inflammation and the immune system attacking those cells, those cells become damaged over time. We know that one of the mechanisms of action of hyperbaric is cellular repair and cellular regeneration. There are a variety of different growth factors and repair factors that are released inside of our body as a result of repetitive exposures to hyperbaric oxygen. Therefore, from a cell and tissue repair standpoint, hyperbaric would also be reasonable to use in those cases. And lastly, there is this imbalance inside of the immune system. There is an overactive portion of the immune system, or in some cases, there's an overactive portion of the immune system, but then other areas of the immune system have been chronically suppressed through other treatments. 
to one of the other mechanisms of action of hyperbaric is balancing and regulation of the immune system. And so again, hyperbaric used to help create that balance inside of our immune system would be appropriate and reasonable in these autoimmune cases. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. From a protocol standpoint, let's talk about inflammation first. We've already discussed that these patients have chronically elevated inflammatory cytokines inside of their body, and we know that hyperbaric can reduce them. We also know that a full range of pressures could have an effect on the inflammatory molecules inside of our body. So every pressure from 1.3 or a soft chamber all the way through two atmospheres and more all have an impact on reducing the inflammatory response inside of the body. Another thing we're starting to learn now is that certain pressures may impact certain cytokines more than others. In other words, lower pressure may have a greater effect on certain people. Higher pressure may have a certain effect on other people. We've done a video on some of the research that I've done in the past looking at these different cytokines. And if you happen to know which inflammatory cytokines are an issue for you, you could look back to some of those videos that we made and to see which category you may fall into. Although I have to say, a lot more research needs to be done on this topic in order to really understand it. But that could be a beginning to understand which ranges either you or your patients may benefit from more. Either way, in all of my protocols, we always start at lower pressures because we really want to do a gentle introduction to allow the body to adapt to these varying pressures of oxygen. So we always start at a 1.3 range and we slowly build patients through up to higher pressures if higher pressures are even needed. So we'll typically do three to five sessions at a 1.3, building into another three to five sessions at 1.5, building to another three to five sessions at 1.75. If we find a pressure that seems to irritate or aggravate some of the patient's symptoms, we'll drop back to the previous pressure and we'll stay there longer. Very rarely for an autoimmune case do I feel the need to even get to two atmospheres or above. Most of these patients seem to respond very favorably between 1.3 and 1.75. Almost exclusively, every one of these cases would typically do at least 40 hours of treatment. And we try to maintain four to six hours a week for eight to 10 weeks to get to that 40 hours. There will be reductions of inflammation in less than 40 hours. We typically see reductions of inflammation even somewhere between 8 and 12 hours of treatment. But it's not until 20, 30, 40 hours that we really start to get the repair mechanisms, the stem cell mobilization, the growth factors releasing. And so these longer protocols are not only geared to lowering their inflammation, they're also geared towards actually stimulating cellular and tissue repair so that some of the long-term consequences of this disease could start to become reversed. The target pressure for these protocols is really tissue specific. In other words, musculoskeletal issues like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, where there's a severe effect on the joints themselves, typically we would try to get to those higher pressures for those types of cases. Additionally, Crohn's and colitis, where this person has ulcers, essentially non-healing wounds inside of their intestines, they may also do better from a tissue repair standpoint at the higher pressures of 2, 2.2, 2.4, et cetera. Contrasting these musculoskeletal or intestinal conditions to something neurological like MS or ALS or even neurodegenerative disease, the majority of those people I would treat between 1.3 and 1.5. A lot of these neurological cases really do best at this lower to mid range of pressure rather than going to really high levels of pressure. So in my opinion, it's important to think of what tissue type we're trying to repair becomes the target pressure that we're going to ultimately try to get to throughout that range and inside the protocol. Some patients that I thought could use higher pressure, they do so well at the mid ranges of pressure, we leave them alone. I don't push people harder than their body requires them to be pushed. Occasionally, I thought I was going to keep somebody in the 1.3 to 1.5 range, but we slowly work them into 1.75 or 2.0 and they continue to flourish. These protocols are designed to be guidelines, not written in stone. It's your clinical decision-making. It's each person's case, each person's comorbidities and family history that have to help you steer the protocol into whatever the best solution for them is going to be. 
If you're looking for more information about autoimmune protocols, or if you're just looking for more information about hyperbaric oxygen, how it works, these mechanisms of action that I'm talking about, and or protocols for additional cases that you might be seeing inside your clinics, we did recently publish a textbook for hyperbaric medicine providers, and inside that book is all of this information. We'll include a link in the description below if you're interested in getting your hands on a copy of that book. Thanks again for your attention, and I'll see you on the next video. As most of you know, I've been teaching and certifying people in hyperbaric medicine for the last few years. What was missing was a concise textbook on the off-label use of hyperbaric oxygen. There are a handful of textbooks out there. They're all exclusively on the 14, which are now 15, FDA-approved hyperbaric indications for hyperbaric use. There is not a single textbook out there on the off-label use, and most importantly, not a book that really goes into the detail of the mechanisms of action. You've seen my videos on mechanisms of action. You understand how important that is to me for you so that you could really understand where hyperbaric fits in this vast world of chronic illness. This book, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, is just that. It is the official textbook that will go along with all the courses that we teach, but it's also a standalone book. If you're looking to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen, more about the indications, the contraindications, the off-label use, the mechanisms of action, this is the book that you're really gonna wanna get your hands on. So click the link in the description below and grab yourself a copy today.